I just love starting my day when the day starts. It ensures that I get all my focused energy for the day ahead of me. Did I know what I was getting myself into as judge for city court? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, I did. I understood that I would be dealing with evictions. And we would be on the front lines with handling many individuals who were representing themselves. I know that evictions will always be a very sensitive topic and a very sensitive matter to deal with. So I knew that I needed to ensure that all people feel respected, they feel welcomed, and they know that they are being heard by a fair and impartial judge. So when Ms. Willis, your tenant, is applying for rental assistance or looking for a new home, this eviction is not gonna be on her record. Are you willing to allow for that? Overall, I just want people to feel heard and taken care of. And I make sure that I am doing everything that I can within my ability to do so, to take care of those that need help. This is truly my dream job. I feel so blessed every single morning I walk into the courthouse. Okay, y'all wanna come eat? Grab a snack before we start? So this is the ham and cheese croissant. At the bottom, there are two peanut butter cookies here. Nothing has nuts. Nothing has nuts. Perfect. Yes, no, I definitely made that. <laughs> like, let me see. Thank you. I'll take, where's the ham? I'll take some cheese. The ham and cheese. Right. How was your evening? Got them. Not too shabby. Okay. Yeah, I finally got the heated blanket in for Mrs. George, so I'm oh, gonna good. deliver that oh, to her tonight. Yeah. She's been crying for a heated blanket for a little bit of time, so yeah. it finally came in. Our morning meetings start our day, and we will discuss during this time what the whole docket looks like for the day. And so, how many eviction matters do we have? As of right now, we're looking at about 40 a day. Okay. Uh, we've got four settings a day, a 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 2 p.m. And we're averaging about 10 per setting. Majority of the cases are for non-payment of rent? Uh, majority, and then also lots of lease violations, oh. which, when you go down and read into them, seem to also be unpaid rent. So that's 40 eviction a day? Mm-hmm. Okay. I do feel like I'm on the front lines. We can be helping people who need to secure their money that's owed on a debt to ensure that they are still with shelter and even assist with disputes between neighbors. It's called people's court oftentimes just because that there are a number of people who are representing themselves without an attorney. Good to it's see so you. good to see you. Really, Thank really you well. so much. And a lot of how I feel or how I conduct myself in the courtroom is because of how I saw how Judge Burial approach the bench and how she ensured that all who come before her are treated very compassionately. The Honorable Monique E. Burial is where I clerked shortly after law school. I just came from clerking for the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. We're dealing with people who don't have representation on major life issues. And we're talking about people's rights and their money, and it can often be quite volatile, especially when I'd say upwards of 80% of the people that appear before me don't have attorneys. And it's not because they haven't sought attorneys, but they simply can't afford it. And so I do think what you do and what I do are akin. And oftentimes, people want to know that they're being heard. They may not always agree with what I rule, but when they feel as though I at least took the time to hear them out, however long that may be, and sometimes it is quite long and lengthy, 
Um, but it's important that we hear what they think is important to the case. And the same is true uh, with First City Court. I can only imagine that could be extremely nerve wracking to come into court. It could be easily noted as your worst day. Nobody's coming to court for fun. And I do ensure that when people come to court, they feel like they're welcomed. They feel that they're respected and they feel like their concerns and what they're here for court are actually being heard. This is a dream position for her because she feels like she can actually make an impact in people's lives. I think a major thing that I've definitely had ingrained within me in my culture is the importance and the support that we provide to our families. My grandmother was widowed at an early age with seven children and had to work by herself. And her two sisters came to live with her to take care of her and her seven children. My father is Indonesian from Singapore and my mother is Thai Chinese. When my father was in dental school, my mom had to work two jobs to provide for the family. And so I think that's something that I got from my parents that has propelled me to motivating myself and making sure that I'm doing everything that I can do to ensure that I can better serve the community, that I can ultimately help people. That's That has been my personal bottom line for since the beginning of my existence. <laughs> So I moved from my hometown of Chicago to New Orleans to attend Loyola University, New Orleans College of Law. And it is here that I attained my law degree. And after being here for law school, I realized that I was completely in love with the community. And that's how I decided to ultimately want to serve the community that I love. From 308, I definitely had a number of law school classes while I was here, and I do recall this being the room that I participated in my first forum during the candidacy. It was Alliance for Good Government. I did not receive the endorsement, but I was happy to be back at Loyola University College of Law and have my first forum experience here. Loyola, to me, has definitely nurtured and encouraged my love of learning and my wanting and desire to give back to our community. So I really am blessed to have attended school here. So we're on the way to visit with Dean Langer. She was formerly a judge. She was a judge both in civil district court and then she went up to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Hi. Hey, Dean Langer, <laughs> how are you? Long time. So awesome. proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. You make us so proud. You. Your work thank is so great. You. So today I finally got a chance to catch up with a dear friend of mine. Dean Landrieu has been a very influential mentor in my life. Honestly, here. how is the bench? Amazing. I feel blessed to be on the bench. I love it. It's it truly is a dream job. So. Mm -hmm. Are y'all busy? We are. Uh, we have 40 evictions a day. Uh, well, but that's just a lot of instability in housing, right? I mean, that's the problem. They're never easy. They're never easy. Right? By the time people are coming to you guys, they've exhausted every opportunity they have. And, and then it's hard. You can't do a lot. The landlords, the funds it's, that they are receiving yeah. from the rental properties, they, they use that for their groceries too, or their bills as well. Right. So I understand both sides. But you're so good at um, lowering the temperature. Because a lot of times when people come into court, they're just escalated because they feel like they're at, they feel like they don't have any solutions. And so the, the time you give them is really important for them to understand that somebody's hearing them. Oh my goodness, it was so good to see you. And thank you so much for taking Judge, the time. I'm, to I'm so glad you came by, really. So honored, and you're just such a, um, a shining star for us. Oh, thank you so much, Dean. So right now, we are going to be visiting the Georges. And this is George in particular, and I are very close. I pretty much feel as though she is uh, I guess an adoptive grandmother at this point. 
during COVID, I was concerned about her health and everything with all the stay at home orders. So I would just call her, drop off some groceries and that whole thing kind of just erupted into what is now part of my everyday life and just checking on her whenever I can throughout the week and bring her goodies. Hey, Mrs. George. How are you doing today? I'm well. I brought you some masks and the food. You know, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Do you want to see this blanket first or do you want me to rub your feet? Just let me feel the blanket. Okay. Yes, I feel it. Your knees hurt too or just your ankles? The ankles and the, the, the legs. When Marissa became judge, my husband and I supported her and she remained close and she comes over almost weekly to, to give me a foot rub. She brings me groceries, which I cannot afford. I want you to be the best judge ever. <laughs> you know that. I, my prayers all day. When I talk about her, my heart just cries because she is so thoughtful, so kind, so endearing. I haven't known her that long. But she, she stepped in and made me feel wanted. People here in New Orleans face neglect, crime, hunger, and lack of involvement with other people. I thought Mark was going to come today. No, just little old me. <laughs> just, just sweet you, huh? Oh. <laughs> Mark is so blessed to have Mary like you. Because mm. you have the jewels. <laughs> My husband Mark and I met at law school at Loyola University, New Orleans College of Law. I believe we met on the second floor during a break. <laughs> Well, what I first thought was that she was a very beautiful girl. <laughs> and she was very smart. Um, she was very articulate. We shared some of the same classes together. When we started dating, we used to study for exams together. We'd spend time in the library, um, basically just studying. We spent our two years together, essentially just studying and, and getting through law school. So it was, at that point, that was when I knew that I could spend the rest of my life with her. So after a long engagement, Mark and I decided to set a date for our wedding, April 4th, 2020, which was 11 years after he proposed to me. It just so happened that the judgeship that was made available, that election date was originally set for the day just before the wedding. So with the opportunity to take a stab at attaining my dream job, Mark and I decided that we would reschedule our wedding and focus all of our efforts towards the campaign. I was super excited about it. Um, we talked about it. It was something that she was passionate about. And when she ultimately made the decision to run, I was 100% in support of it because I thought that she would be a great judge. Campaigning was such an experience. It was exhausting. It was stressful. Oh, there were days when we woke up before the sun and started our day. And by the time we got home, it was close to when the sun was about to come up again. We were going to start the whole day all over again. I had a lot of long days during the campaign. It did change and affect our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, we were focused 100% on her campaign, campaigning on a day-to-day -day basis, knocking doors, reaching out to the community, um, trying to do everything and anything that we could to help her be successful in her run for office. It was fun, exciting, but also rough. So during the campaign, things still continued to change. The original, election date was pushed back twice due to the pandemic. And after 
The first election took place, then there was a runoff between another candidate and myself. So that pushed it out even further out than what was originally scheduled for. General election is three to four months. And, you know, if you have a runoff, there's generally a month after. This was an eight month campaign as a result of COVID, which became very difficult. That almost felt like it was never going to end, that my life was going to be campaigning for this position until, I don't know, indefinitely at that point, I almost felt that way. And so everything was completely overwhelming. And in the back of my head, I just said, look, all this work and everything that is taking place right now, the exhaustion, the being tired, the having to run around, the nervousness, and everything else is gonna be completely worth it because I know that I gave it my all. And repeat after me, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge. We are approaching Section B of First City Court, which is where I sit on the bench and where I serve the community that I love through listening to the litigants that come before the court, to ensuring that they feel heard and seen and that they are treated with respect every day. All rise. Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. First City Court for the Parish Orleans Section B is now in session. The Honorable Marissa A. Hudson-Barrett presiding. Order and silence is now commanded. God save this state and this honorable court. Counsel, would you please make your appearances for the record? The judiciary has a responsibility to not only stay in contact, but to stay in touch with the people we represent. And people tell me how much they appreciate that she listens that she's respectful about how she conveys the information to them without talking down to people, without belittling anyone for their position. And that's important. Mr. Smith is being gracious in allowing for you to have extra days to make sure that you find housing and vacate as well. And that is my ruling, so ordered. This is where my husband and I went for our lunch break. <laughs> we got married on our lunch break. And so we're gonna go up to the third floor to see Judge Reese, who performed our nuptials. Wow. Thank you kindly. Hello, Your Honor. I was honored as I all get out to be able to perform your wedding because that meant a lot to me and I know there are other folks in your life who could have served that purpose, but the fact that y'all chose me just was really, really, really touched my heart. And I really appreciated the opportunity to share in your joy. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Oh, come and give it <laughs> <a break. laughs> Thank you, Judge. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Weddings are one of the best parts of this job. And you get a chance to share in a little bit of happiness with all the stuff we got to do that don't make you happy. Well, I mean, it wasn't a whole lot of notice, so, you know. <laughs> so they told me, uh, can we come in? Uh, and if I had anything on my schedule, it was out. <laughs> this was priority one. I said, we got to nail this down, but we got to strike while the iron is hot. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. <laughs> all the days of my life. <laughs> I'm Marissa, you repeat after me. I'm Marissa. I'm Marissa. Take you Mark. Take you Mark. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. We still hadn't had a wedding reception yet, and it you know, at some point we will, but as of right now, we're just thrilled because she gets to enjoy the fact that she's a judge. To me, it's important to ensure that I have the compassion and make sure that people are being heard, seen, and felt like they are being treated with respect. And I'm committed and I remain committed to serve the community that I love so dearly as First City Court Judge of Section B.